Hello everyone, my name is Tyler, and this week we will be talking about the sub-emitter tab for Unity Particle Systems. Um, this week's scene is pretty similar to last week's in that I have the same terrain as before. Um, we'll be using this to kind of show off the more uh, collision aspects of uh, Unity sub-emitters, and we have the same kind of particle system as last week, where it just kind of bounces off of the hills um, because of the world collision instead of the plane collision, and it's just a, kind of a falling box of particles, so that's um, the only thing that is different is that I have a default uh, particle system here that um, has a slightly increased uh, speed and it, it has a rate of emission of 5 particles per second instead of 10. So um, those are, that's the only thing that's different, so um, without further ado, I guess let's begin. Uh, so sub-emitters are basically additional particle systems that you can have Unity spawn under very um, special circumstances. Um, you can see which kind of circumstances that you have over here. The birth particle, birth, the birth of each particle in your particle system. Whenever your particle, whenever a particle collides with something in your particle system, and whenever a particle reaches the end of its lifetime in your particle system. Um, so these are um, kind of for um, kind of convenience for um, effects artists, so that they can uh, use these effects without having to kind of like script it on their own. So they're pretty handy, um, but. Do be aware that when since you're creating additional particle systems, while well, they can be very pow powerful because they are additional particle systems that you can manipulate, you will have more um, particles being on screen. So you just have to keep aware um, that your particle count might get a little high, and it's really easy to get uh, the particle count really high with sub emitters. So I guess with those warnings in place, let's begin. Um, you can kind of select what emitter you want um, over here. If you click the little um, circle dot thing. It'll bring up a screen of which uh, particles, the, of the particles in your scene and in your assets folder. Um, so you can use one of the particles that you've created already as a sub emitter instead of having a default one, which you can do by clicking on this uh, little cross over here. So let's click that and then use the default one. Um, so what birth uh, emitter circumstances do is um, whenever a particle is spawned in your particle system, it'll create an emitter attached to that particle um, and then it'll travel along with the particle and then the emitter will do its uh, thing. So over here you can see um, a particle system now has a hierarchy um, with the sub-emitter being a child of the parent particle system that we attach the sub-emitter to. So if you want to see what the sub-emitter particle system looks like, um, it's right here. It's exactly the same as the particle systems that we've been working, at, uh, working with, which means that you can do all sorts of kind of crazy things with sub-emitters that you could do um, with normal particles particle systems, so they're they're very powerful and they're pretty fun to, fun to use, um, but we'll be just doing some of the more default stuff today to show off kind of um, what the different circumstances that particle sub-emitters can provide. Um, so let's go over to the collision particle system to kind of show off the next bit. Um, over here, let's just add a default collision, and then you can kind of immediately see that um, a bunch of emitters and particles are being spawned. Uh, whenever a particle co collides with an object in the world. And that's basically what collision sub-emitters do. It's whenever a par your particle collides with either an object or another particle system or anything, it'll spawn um, the sub-emitter that you define here at that point of collision. So um, the sub-emitter that we have right now is kind of just like a basic explosion effect with a burst of 30 particles and it has a spherical shape so the particles will just go out in every direction. So uh, let's move on to the last circumstance you can kind of do for sub-emitters, and that's death. Um, so what this will do is whenever your particles reach the end of your life, of, of the lifetime, of their lifetime, it'll spawn uh, the sub-emitter that you see here at the point, uh, la at the last point at which the particle was alive. So um, it's the same kind of basic explosion system that, that um, Unity had for the collision system. It's just a burst of 30 particles with a spherical shape, so they'll go outward in all directions. Um, so now that we've kind of shown the different star circumstances for particle sub-emitters, I'm going to talk about some of the kind of pitfalls that you can run into. Uh, the first one is you should always name uh, your sub-emitters, just so you know which one is which. This one is the kind of explosion death effect that we have right now. So let's uh, name that appropriately so we don't get so we don't uh, get confused. And then this one by process of elimination has to be the trail emitter that we had. Um, so the next pitfall that you can kind of run into is for uh, emission. If you're having it based on rate instead of bursts, it's a little bit different than kind of your default particle systems because this will have um, have a rate kind of over the duration of the entire durations of the particle instead of kind of a rate per second kind of thing. 
excuse me. Um, so for example, if we do two particles per second, um, you'll kind of you can kind of see that it's not actually doing uh, two particles per second, but it's more kind of like doing a slower kind of emission rate um, than usual. So uh, should be careful of that. The other thing that you should be careful of is that um, if you uh, kind of attach shapes or have, have different shapes other than like spheres or something for your uh, emitter. So if you do like a cone and then if you give your sub emitter some speed, um, you can kind of see that um, the cone for the sub emitter shape is right here and you can kind of see that but it's different from the cone that's actually attached to the emitter for each uh, for each uh, particle that we have. It's the, the cone for that's kind of more attached backwards to each particle in your parent system. Um, so while it does look different um, over here from the, the actual cone that's being spawned over here, um, it's not too much of a problem because you can still see the motion that the particles are going to do over here. So um, that kind of has to do with the local local space and world space. Um, the particle, the sub-emitter particles will be based on the uh, local space of the particle that they're attached to instead of the, um, the world space. So if you're doing any kind of rotations with your, um, with your parent system, that'll affect how the velocity and speed and stuff is calculated for your uh, sub-emitter particles. So you should keep that in mind. Um, one way to avoid it is just not to have speed and then instead have velocity over lifetime and then have that be in the world space. That'll fix your problem because it's constrained to the axes of the world space instead of the local particle system. But other than that, that's about it uh, for sub-emitters. If you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments and I'll answer them. Um, but other than that, I guess I'll see everyone next week.